As the 1600s drew to a close, the Atlantic and Gulf coasts of North America teemed with activity. First the Spanish, then the British, and the French explored and set up colonies. From Canada to Cuba, European military engineers built fortifications to protect their outposts of empire. In St. Augustine, the Spanish government authorized a costly stone fortification they called Castillo de San Marcos to safeguard their northernmost colony, La Florida. Construction began in 1672 and was completed 23 years later in 1695. With 33-foot high walls that were at least 17 feet thick and powerful artillery, the Castillo provided a daunting defense and decades of security for St. Augustine and its harbor. For Spain's citizens living in the area, it stood as a citadel, a refuge where they and the Spanish soldiers sheltered themselves during sieges that lasted as long as two months. Siege warfare was a waiting game. Defenders of the Castillo took calculated risks by deciding how to carefully ration food, supplies, and ammunition until hoped for reinforcements arrived from Cuba or Mexico. The attackers, on the other hand, hoped that they had adequate amounts of food, supplies, and powerful enough artillery to breach the walls of the fortress. But the designers and builders of the Castillo did their jobs well. Despite attacks and lengthy sieges, no enemy ever took it by force. Each time the Castillo changed hands, it came about by treaty and negotiation, not combat. Three main factors account for the long legacy of the Castillo's effective defense, its structure and design, the soldiers who manned the fort, and the firearms and artillery they were trained to use. The design of the Castillo took into account very defensive thinking for the time. From above, the design of the Spanish fortress resembles a star with four large points. Each corner is protected by a broad, diamond-shaped bastion. The dozens of cannon mounted on these bastions covered the approaches to the fort with deadly, interlocking fields of fire. On the flat Florida coast, the Castillo's 30-foot-high walls allowed sentries to see an enemy approaching with plenty of time to ready the defenses. The walls were made of thick coquina, a soft limestone formed out of shells and sand. Coquina was surprisingly effective at absorbing the impact of enemy shot without cracking or shattering the way harder stones would. Since no fortress can function without a trained and disciplined garrison, the second factor of the Castillo's effective defense was the soldiers. Regimented drilling allowed combat procedures to become second nature to these soldiers, a critical component in the heat of battle. The men drilled constantly to master the use of two key gunpowder weapons integral to the defense of the Castillo, the cannon and the musket. These weapons were the third piece of the Castillo's defense. Bronze and cast iron cannon were the most powerful and longest range weapons in Castillo de San Marcos. With big guns of varying sizes, cannon worked together as a system to provide what is known as interlocking fields of fire. Artillery was placed to cover all of the angles an enemy might approach. If any one cannon failed, there were others covering the same ground. A cannon crew made up of at least four soldiers and a commander learned to clean, load, and fire their gun by drill commands. It was important not to forget one step when under attack, making the hours of practice all the more critical. First, the gun captain calls the crew to attention. Before loading, a cannoneer cleans out and moistens the bore to put out any sparks left in the barrel from earlier firings. Gunners then load powder and ball and lever the heavy weapon into its firing position. Then they aim and prime the vent with loose gunpowder. Looking inside the barrel, we see the gunpowder-filled cartridge and cannonball immediately below the primed vent. When the priming powder is lit, the gunpowder quickly burns down to the cartridge, igniting it. The resulting explosion forces the cannonball out of the barrel faster than the speed of sound.
After the shot, the artillerymen check the bore before repeating the cycle. The Castillo's smooth bore cannon could be loaded with a variety of deadly projectiles. A single solid cannonball was the best choice for battering holes in large targets at maximum range. The biggest guns at Castillo de San Marcos had a range of three miles, while the smaller six-pounder cannon had a range of a mile and a half. Even when facing enemy attack, Spanish soldiers methodically followed each of the commands to load and fire the cannon. Regular practice of the cannon drill was required so that they would not overlook a single step when in the heat of battle. Following is an example of this drill. Atención. Dispónganse para el ejercicio. Bendíganos Santa Bárbara. Entren la cuchara en el cañón. Reconozcan si está cargado. Retiren la cuchara. Entre en la nanada y tapen el fogón. Pasen la nanada en el cañón. Retírenla a su lugar. Apronten atacador y pólvora. Entrenla en el cañón. Ataquen. Atacador a su lugar. Tomen los espeques. Dispóngase a poner en batería el cañón. Cañón en batería. Dispónganse para la puntería. Apunten. Espeques a su lugar. Se ven y cubran el fogón. Tomen el botafuego. Botafuego al cañón. Alto y soplen la mecha. Fuego. Bota fuego a su lugar. Tomen las prolongas. Dispónganse a sacar el cañón de la batería. Cureña, fuera de batería. Alto. Prolongas a su lugar. Entren el sacatrapos en el cañón. Pasen el sacatrapos al cañón. Retírenla a su lugar. Entre la nanada. Y tapen el fogón. Pasen la ganada al cañón.
retírenla a su lugar. Reháganse. When engaging an enemy at closer range, soldiers relied upon a more portable weapon, the smoothbore flintlock musket. By the early 1700s, soldiers of every army in Europe were equipped with smoothbore flintlock muskets. Not as accurate as a rifle, yet much faster to reload, soldiers loaded and fired their flintlock muskets in unison, throwing a blast of bullets toward the enemy. At short ranges, the impact of a musket volley was psychologically devastating and deadly. As with the cannon, soldiers learned to handle their muskets by drilling. A sergeant gave orders that broke down the steps to load and fire into simple movements. Soldiers drilled so that they could make the movements without thinking about them and without forgetting a critical step, especially when in the heat of battle. First, a paper cartridge was torn open and a small amount of gunpowder was poured into the pan on the side of the flintlock. The soldier then inserted the cartridge into the barrel and rammed it down. To make ready to fire, he then pulled back the cock into the full cock position. The firing mechanism, or lock, of the flintlock musket was a strong, simple, and reliable design. Looking inside the lock mechanism, we find only a few basic moving parts. When a soldier pulled the trigger, he released the tumbler inside of the lock mechanism. This allowed the cock, holding a sharpened flint, to fall forward and strike the hammer, creating a shower of sparks, which ignited the gunpowder in the pan. This powder flashed and set off the cartridge's powder inside the barrel, forcing the musket ball out. Well-trained soldiers could load and shoot their muskets as many as four times a minute, much faster than any rifleman of the same era. Like the cannon crew, Spanish soldiers were required to follow a specific drill of commands to load and fire their weapons during an enemy engagement. Constant practice and drilling allowed them to face battle and not overlook any of the commands. Following is an example of this drill. Armas al hombro. La mano derecha al arma. Retiren las armas. Pongan la llave en el fiador. Limpien la piedra. Soplen la cazoleta. Saquen el cartucho. Abran el cartucho. Seven. Cierren la cazoleta. Pasen las armas al lado izquierdo. Metan el cartucho en el cañón. Saquen la baqueta. Alta la baqueta. Acorten la baqueta. Metan la baqueta en el cañón. Ataquen. Retiren la baqueta. Alta la baqueta. Acorten la baqueta. Metan la baqueta. En su lugar, armas al hombro, la mano derecha al arma, altas las armas, presenten las armas, preparen las armas, apunten, disparen, retiren las armas, armas al hombro, la mano derecha al arma, reháganse. The presence of this large stone fortress symbolized both permanence and security for Spain's Florida. The fortress itself, made of thick coquina walls that could absorb enemy fire. The soldiers, who drilled repeatedly so that their skills became second nature. And the devastating weapons of that era were the key factors of Castillo de San Marcos's successful defense. All told, it was a big investment of time and treasure, but one that delivered safety and security to St. Augustine for decades to come.